Hi, thank you for joining me for Bible study. And we're in Ephesians chapter 6. Come to one of my favorite verses. And I think it's because I remember my grandmother and my aunt in vacation Bible school when I was a little boy teaching me this verse. And I memorized it. And it's still kind of stuck in my head. Ephesians 6.10 Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And we're going to do more than just that verse. But this verse is, has that meat specialness to me. Because I remember, first verse I really remember remembering. So, Ephesians 6.10. And we're going to go through a few verses here. We're not going to get it all done today. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And we're going to pause right there. But as we look at this, this is summing up. Uh, this is the, the, stirring, uh, the stirring speech to, to inspire the soldiers, right? Before going back into battle. The halftime speech for the, for the coach to give to the players that they would do their best in the last half. This is Paul at the conclusion of his letter inspiring these, these faithful friends of his, these church people, to do all the things that he's already written about, right? Because he's been writing a lot to them, how they've been blessed in Ephesians 1-3 with all the spiritual blessings in the heavenlies in Christ. And so they have been equipped with much in Christ, chosen for such a battle as this. That it is God who has rescued them from their place in the enemy camp to rescue them from that place, to give them new hearts and to give them new desires. It has been by grace they have been saved through faith not of works but instead we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and we saw how how Paul this was his prayer that he prayed that they would be strengthened with might through his through his spirit through God's spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints the width, the length, the depth, the height, to know the love of Christ. And then he told them, so walk worthy. Walk worthy of the name by which you carry of Jesus Christ. Equip one another. You've been given the apostles and prophets, teachers, for the equipping of the saints, edifying the body. Work together as a body to do this. We're not by ourselves in this. No longer living and walking like the rest of them, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ, the new man. Put on the new man, created according to God in true righteousness and holiness by the renewing of your mind. And then you got practical, right? So no longer do these things. Do those things. And then he says, just walk as I walk. Imitate me as I imitate Christ. And he got really personal, didn't he? As he submitting to one another in the fear of God and he showed them what those things would look like. There's going to be a lot of pressure not to do all those things, to remember those things. His concern was that they would be like children being pushed to and fro by the by the lies and by deceptions, being carried carried by every wind of doctrine, trickery of men, 
cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. So instead he says, grow, grow in the word, grow in spirit. And so now he says, this is it, men. This is it, women. Be strong in the power of his might. Not Paul's, but in the Lord. To be strengthened, to be finding our, our ability to do these things in God, in his spirit. Put on the whole armor of God, which may stand against his wiles, against his deceptions, like we read earlier. He wants to trick us. Every wind of doctrine lies during temptation. He doesn't have many new tricks, but he doesn't need them because the old ones still work. Lying to us about, is God really reliable? Lying to us about, will that sin really be bad? Lying to us. Well, is it really wrong if everybody's doing it? All those things. He says, we need to look and spiritually preparedness of a soldier. Because here's the thing. As he wrote this to these Ephesians and the people in the Roman province of Asia, they knew what soldiers looked like. They were in their streets. They marched through. They saw, and those soldiers, they stuck together as a group. When it came to battle, the Roman army worked as a, what is called a phalanx. They did not separate out. They stayed together as a unit. They were invincible that way. Shields up and shields over the top and marching as one. And we as a church work together, staying together, defending one another. There is strength in numbers this way. Because we have an enemy and it's not people that we disagree with. It's not the rude person. It's not, those aren't our real enemies. They're just pawns in a bigger war. They... If they're not saved, then they have darkness and they don't know anything different than the darkness, as Jesus said. The darkness that is, the light that is in them is darkness, then that's all they know. And if they are saved, as he warns us, some people have been re-entangled again in sin and, and we're all still a work in progress, aren't we? And so he says, keep your focus on what's the real enemy here. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenlies. Won't try to, we'll try not to get bogged down in, in what all those are, but it does give us that picture that, one, we are in a war with an invisible war against spiritual enemies that are really there and there is hierarchies and and we may not be uh, feel like we're world influencers but those are enemies out there remember in the book of Daniel where there was angelic warfare going on regarding his people and the messages he was to receive that ruled nations that is the world that the Old Testament reveals to us. And so those principalities, those powers, they were at work in the small and in the big to defeat the enemy, which is us. Because they can't touch God, they can't touch Jesus. They're way out of their league. So they go for his people to hinder us in doing good. That's why we pray for our missionaries. That's one of the things we pray for them is that they're on the front lines 
in oftentimes in places where the enemy is held for for centuries and so it is uh, prayers for them against the world rulers of darkness just as Paul told the Corinthians the ruler of this age has blinded people with the darkness that they might not see the light of Jesus Christ so it's more than just a, a persuasion of the mind there is again spiritual warfare going on in this there are spirits of wickedness depravity even in the heavenlies in the sky and above the sky at work so he says take up therefore take up the whole armor of god that you may be able to withstand that you may be able to resist this not give up in the evil day and having done all to stand what does he mean by the evil day? Well, there is an ultimate evil day, the, the great tribulation that is coming. But I think we've all had days of tribulation that felt pretty tremendous in our lives. And that's he doesn't want us to falter in those days either. But having done all, to endured all these things, to be walking maturely as he has challenged them in the first five chapters of this letter, Having done all, you stand. And really, that's the key word in this, isn't it? Is stand your ground. Stand together. Don't throw in the towel. Don't turn and run. Stand. Don't give up. The reward is worth it. Christ is with you. Stay with the shepherd. Stand. Stand your ground. And I wanted to just see how this applies to those first three pieces of armor. And again, I think a lot of this is, is just him being uh, a great teacher and, and doing these things. We can tweeze out all sorts of fun details in these things, but we don't really have time to do that this morning. But see where he says, so stand with truth and that's a word that speaks of both faithfulness and with the truth and you'll find teachers who teach it both ways because both really apply we need to ask God to help us to remain faithful to not wimp out not to to quit on him but to stand on the truth the unchanging truth of the Word of God. Hiding it in our heart. Reading it daily. Because I can tend to forget things. Although I guess I didn't forget Ephesians 6.10. But that goes into when we're young. And when our children and grandchildren are young. Pouring these verses into them now. Because it's a lot easier to soak this stuff up when we're kids. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness. The ultimate righteousness we have is the righteousness of Christ imputed to us, given to us. But in wearing that, then we are to walk worthy of it. And our righteousness, doing the right thing, gives us protection. Because if you're in the habit of doing the right thing, then when those bigger challenges come, it's like, well, I'm going to still do the right thing. We don't want to get on the slippery slope where we'll lose our footing and slide into greater and greater sin. But instead, stand. Stand your ground. When we've had to take a step back, repent, and continue standing. How? With our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And that's where those first three chapters of this letter really are important, is knowing that there's good news. We've been put at peace with God. We were at one time enemies, remember that from Ephesians 2? But we've been brought from the camp of the enemy. We've been given a new heart. 
no longer at the beck and call of the enemy. And now we've been put at peace with him. And others can be too. And so there's a readiness. Because we know where we are. We know who we are in Christ. As Ephesians 1 reminded us the importance of being in Christ. And so we can have good footing from that. The Roman soldiers, uh, I'm told that their, shoots for, their shoes for warfare had nails coming through the soles in order to ensure they had good footing. And that's what we need. So we're not pushed about when the world is telling us, well, this is what everybody's doing. Well, but what is that what God says? Or when we hear the enemy's voice whispering to us, those intrusive thoughts. And then, no, that's not what God would have me do. Because I know who he is and I know what his will is. Or when the flesh itself, still wanting to sin, wants to fly off from the handle and, and do the wrong things of its desires, it gets us in most of our trouble. No, stand your ground, don't give in. You can tell there's a lot going on in this, and we're just skimming the surface, and there's a lot more still to come. So, We'll look at that in a couple weeks. But thank you for joining me for this little Bible study. And so I pray that that inspires you in the busyness. It's been a busy week for me. I'm sure it has been for you too. That we find our footing in Jesus Christ. That we stand our ground. Don't be pushed over. Being in the word, reminding us because there's going to be a lot of stresses and pressures this week, next two weeks. Let's, let's finish strong. God bless. God keep you. Lord willing, we'll see you next time.